Hi, my name is Mitchell and I'm a manufacturing engineer here at Haas Automation. Daily and weekly maintenance is crucial to make sure that you get your Haas lathe operating at peak performance. However, the reality is that some owners of Haas lathes take better care of the vehicles in their garage than they do the machines in their shops. Taking a few minutes out of your day to take care of your machine may cost you a few bucks in the here and now. However, you will be money ahead in the long run, especially when considering the alternative of paying thousands of dollars to replace worn down components on your lathe, in addition to the loss of revenue due to machine downtime. Plus, maintaining your machine might actually be easier than you think. When I get to work each morning, I boil some water to make a cup of tea. Rather than sit there and watch the water boil, I can actually get several maintenance tasks done. The first thing you should do is apply three pumps of grease to the hydraulic chuck at each zerk fitting. This ensures that the chuck can properly clamp down on your part so it doesn't slip in the jaws, and it also greatly reduces the risk of throwing your part, which could damage the machine or even injure your operator. Remember, if your chuck is dry and gritty inside, this adds friction to the moving parts. This force it takes to overcome this added friction is force that's not clamping your part. Check the hydraulic pressure on the side of the machine and make sure that they are set to the correct levels so that your chuck, tailstock, and steady rest all operate correctly. Next, unlike the mill, there is no designated spindle warm-up program located in the memory of the control. However, you can still warm up the spindle by running it at 500 RPMs for five minutes. This should definitely be done if your machine has not run for four or more days, but it is still recommended for everyday use, especially if running your spindle at high RPMs. While the spindle warm-up is running, check the air lines for water by depressing the trigger on the air gun and make sure to keep it pointed away from you. Since the air gun is fed from the bottom of the manifold, any water in the system will escape when the trigger on the air gun is activated. However, if you consistently have water in the lines, this is a sign that a bigger issue going on with the compressed air in your shop. Next, open up the diagnostics page on the control and check your air pressure and the coolant level. Check to make sure they are both at acceptable levels for operating your machine. Finally, check the coolant concentration, especially when working in a high production or hot environment where the concentration is affected by carryout or evaporation. Using a refractometer, Verify that the concentration in your tank matches the manufacturer's specifications, usually between 6 and 8%. Now the morning maintenance on my machine is done, and I can enjoy a nice cup of tea. After each shift, or at the end of every day, clear off any chips present on the weigh covers and evacuate them from the machine using the chip conveyor. Use a brush to remove the larger chips and follow up with the air gun to remove the rest. This prevents chips from putting unnecessary strain on the weigh cover seals, as well as ensure that the ferrous chips, such as steel or cast iron, do not begin to rust within the machine. Additionally, check the chip strainer filter on top of the coolant tank and remove any excessive piles of chips that may be present in restricting the flow of coolant back into the tank. These are all the tasks that we recommend doing every day. However, there are some additional tasks that should be done once a week, for example, every Friday. First, blow off any chip buildup on the top of the turret or inside any of the cavities. Next, inspect the air regulator pressure gauge located in the loop panel on your machine and verify that it matches the reading on the control and is within the acceptable operating range. With the diagnostics page open, check the coolant float gauge and verify that it is operating properly and the display reading matches the actual level of your tank. Check the surface of the coolant tank for tramp oil and remove any present using an absorbent pad. You can even use shop towels for this in a pinch. If you see tramp oil regularly, you might consider investing in an oil skimmer to keep your coolant performing at its best. If you have an auxiliary filter, check the cleanliness of the auxiliary filter bag and replace the bag if needed. Finally, if you have a bar feeder running in a high production environment, Grease the bar feed push rod and bushing using a generic lithium-based grease such as Mobile Grease XHP 222. Now I know that was a lot of tasks and some of this work is more applicable to some shops than others. You know what is best for your shop and we encourage you to develop your own weekly maintenance checklist for your shop. But just in case it might help, we made a list of all the tasks that I just described 
and you can download it in the description below. And that does it for today's service video. Remember, a small investment now can save you expensive downtime in the future. For more service-related information, visit hostcnc.com/service. And thanks for watching.